All right, you guys. So we're going to do a little bit of class notes on empirical formulas. So if you've been absent or if you are a virtual student, then this is how you're getting your notes. Okay. So empirical formulas, um, I'm going to abbreviate that capital E, capital F for some of our problems. So if you wanted to just jot that down, that's just how I'm going to abbreviate it, mostly just being lazy. Okay. But um, definition from the book, you should already have that written in your notes packet. It's the lowest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. Okay. So we're looking at an atom ratio, which is also a mole ratio. Like if, you, if we have a mole of the substance and it's two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen for every molecule, then it's going to be two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen within the sample. So an atom ratio can also be a mole ratio of this, the pieces, the components of your substance. So for example, in biology, you guys have probably learned already that C6H12O6 is glucose. Well, that is not a lowest ratio of the elements in that compound, okay? All of those numbers are divisible by six. So if we divide them all by six, we end up with one, two, and one. We don't have to write ones. So we get CH2O, CH2O is the empirical formula for the substance um, glucose, okay? So if you can reduce the formula, that reduced version of the molecule is the empirical formula. Now it doesn't actually exist this way. Uh, glucose has six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens for every molecule, but its reduced ratio is this, okay? Some molecules automatically exist as a reduced ratio, and so their molecular formula and their empirical formula are the same, like H2O, two to one. That's an empirical formula, but it's also the molecular formula. Okay, there are several steps to finding an empirical formula, and I wanna go through those with you. And this is in the steps to determine empirical formulas, okay? so. Step one, we're going to assume 100 grams, assume 100 grams to change percentages to grams. Assume 100 grams to change percentages to grams. Okay, bear with me. Some of these steps might be like, what is she even talking about? When we do the example, I'm gonna discuss each step and kind of why we use that. But let's just get them written out so you have them and then we'll refer back to them as we do an example problem, okay? All right, step two is convert grams, convert grams, to moles. Again, I mean, that, that's a pretty self-explanatory step, but why we do that and what the purpose is, all of that will come with the example. Step three, divide by the smallest number of moles. Divide by the smallest number of moles. to get a ratio divide by the smallest number of moles to get a ratio and step 4 use the whole number ratio use the whole number ratio to write the formula. Use the whole number ratio to write the formula. It is possible that after step three, you don't have a whole number ratio, okay? So we use whole number ratios to write the formula. If it's not a whole number ratio, we have, we have another piece to step four, okay? You can multiply the ratio Multiply the ratio to make it whole.
if not already. Again, if you don't have a whole number ratio, you're gonna to have to find a multiplier to make it a whole number ratio. Again, we're gonna do an example that's gonna show you all of these steps, okay? So hopefully you can keep these steps visible for yourself as we go through an example, um, because I have to get rid of this to make room on my screen for the next piece. Okay, so example problem. Okay, I'm gonna use the line side here. All right, example problem. Here's, here's our breakdown, okay? A compound has 25.9% nitrogen and 74.1% oxygen. What is its empirical formula? What is its empirical formula? Okay. Again, the mass percentage, this is percent composition. So from the first part of chapter 10.3, we learned percent composition. And percent composition is all based on mass. So 25.9% of the mass of the compound is nitrogen. 74.1% of the mass of the compound is oxygen. We wanna know what the empirical formula is and the formula is based on a mole ratio, not a mass ratio, okay? So we have to convert, we have to figure out what the mole ratio of these elements is. Well, in order to do that, I have to change from masses to moles. So when our first step over here was assume 100 grams, that's literal. If I had 100 grams of this substance, 25.9 grams of it would be nitrogen and 74.1 grams would be oxygen. So when I make an assumption, like we have 100 grams of this sample, then I'm just literally able to change my percent signs to grams, okay? So all I do is I copy those percentages, 25.9 grams of nitrogen. Again, if I had 100 grams of this stuff, that's how many grams would be nitrogen, right? So I'm gonna just assume I do have 100 grams. And then I'm gonna skip a couple lines and I'm gonna do the same thing for oxygen, 74.1 grams of oxygen. So. This again, mass percentage, percent composition is a mass ratio of the elements. Mass ratio, 25.9 grams for every 74.1 grams. Okay, nitrogen to oxygen. I'm trying to find a mole ratio in order to write the empirical formula. So my second step is convert grams to moles. Okay, well, we know how to do that. If you don't remember how to do that, let me find my periodic table. Remember your molar map, okay? If you're converting grams to moles, you're gonna use molar mass, and molar mass is one mole equals a specific number of grams, and that comes from the front of your periodic table as the mass number, okay? So for each of these, I'm just gonna do a single step conversion, convert them to moles. Where do I wanna put one mole? the top, because I'm not trying to cancel moles. So one mole of nitrogen, when I look that up on the periodic table, it's 14.0 grams. One mole of oxygen is 16.0 grams. So my grams cancel on both of these, and I'm gonna figure out my mole, my moles of each substance, okay? All right. Sig figs aren't super important on these problems. In fact, the more sig figs you keep, the more accurate your answer will end up being. Um, again, we're looking for a formula at the end. We're not really looking for sig figs. We're not gonna look at the moles. We're gonna look at the formula, okay? So if you keep more sig figs, you'll have a better chance of success at getting the right ratio. So just keep that in mind on other problems, okay? So this one ends up being 1.85 moles of nitrogen. This one ends up being 4.63 moles of oxygen. Step two is done. All right, step three.
divide by the smallest number of moles to get a ratio, okay? In this problem, I only have two elements. Sometimes you're gonna have three or four or five elements and you're gonna have to do molar conversions for all of them, okay? Once you've done all of them, you look at your answers and whichever one is your smallest, in this case, my nitrogen, we're gonna divide everything by that smallest answer. So I'm gonna divide by 1.85, divide by 1.85, oops. If I had more elements, I would divide all of them by the smallest answer, okay? This is just gonna simplify my ratio. Instead of having decimals like this, I'm gonna end up with one nitrogen. And when I do this division, it should come out to a nice fraction or a whole number. And this one, it comes out to 2.5, okay? So I have one nitrogen for every two and a half oxygens, all right. Step four says use the whole number ratio to write the formula or multiply the ratio to make it whole if it isn't already a whole number ratio, okay? Well, this isn't a whole number ratio. A half is as far away from a whole number as you can get, okay? So I need to multiply, right? Right now I have one to 2.5, right? Nitrogen, oxygen. I need to multiply these to make them both whole numbers. Well, what can I multiply 2.5 by to make it a whole number? Hopefully you're telling me two. I can't just multiply one side. I have to multiply both sides. So if I multiply this ratio by two, I'm going to end up with two to five as my new ratio, okay? Those are whole numbers. So my answer, my formula is N2O5. Whoops. Sorry, gotta be able to see it, okay? So N2O5 becomes the formula, the empirical formula for this substance. So you're always looking to get a whole number ratio and you use those numbers with the elements that they represented the whole way through the problem, okay? Again, if you end up after this step when you're dividing by the smallest number of moles, if this one ends up as 2.9998, that's three, just round it to a whole number, okay? If it ends up as a fraction, it will be recognizable. So 2.5, so a half, or 2.33, which is a third, okay? So you wanna look for a recognizable fraction. If you get a weird number like 0.42, that's not a recognizable fraction. You did something wrong. Probably over here, you use the wrong mass, okay? So just double check your steps. You should get a half, a third, maybe a quarter, but it's not, not likely, okay? Those are the recognizable fractions. If it's within a 10th of a whole number, round it to that whole number. Again, if it's within a 10th, you can round it to that whole number, okay? So 2.03, I would just call that two, okay? So practice those problems. Hopefully this makes sense to you. Make sure that you get those sample problems done and get the key sentence written for the third part of 10.3. Okay. Email your teacher if you need help. See you later.